here. Okay, my clock says we are at the top of the hour, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, everybody. I'm Joan Stewart, the Publicity Hound, and I'd like to welcome you to 52 Solid Gold Publicity Nuggets to make self-promotion easier and faster and a whole heck of a lot more efficient. The tips you're going to see here today were excerpted from my 52 special reports. I started creating these a while ago. They were one of my first information products, and I've been updating them every several years. And this one you see here is the big bundle of all 52 reports. I want to go over um, the little housekeeping here on how to ask questions during today's call. If you are participating in this call live, you can, you'll see the little questions box on your dashboard. And if you want to unlock it from the dashboard, all you have to do is click on where that little yellow arrow is. Just click there and it'll pop out and you can move it around and you can expand it, but don't expand it too much or you won't be able to see my slides. You can ask your questions in there. If you were watching on a rebroadcast, you will see a box underneath, you should see a box underneath the video. And if I am answering questions live, if you're watching the rebroadcast and I'm answering your questions via email, you want to be sure your email program is open because that's how the answer is going to be returned to you via email. So if you ask your question in the box and you click submit and you don't see anything, you're going to have to go over and open up your email program. But you don't have to do that during the presentation. You can wait until we're done. At the very end for the publicity hounds who stay with me right to the end, I have got three best of breed publicity tips, three Super duper killer tips. So you're going to want to stay. Here's my promise to you today. I'm going to give you at least 52 doggone great ideas you can start using today. And I promise not to bark if you can't do most of them or all of them. I also promise to support you if you choose only a handful to follow through on. You decide which ones are best for you. And this image that I used here, by the way, is um, courtesy of Dan Cochran from freedigitalphoto.com. That's a site where you can get uh, lots and lots of free digital photos. Let's talk about what we'll learn today. We'll learn how to work with traditional media, how to interview. A lot of people are scared about doing media interviews. Pitching tips, ideas for creating content, because as we know, content is king, and it's going to continue to be king for a while. I'll show you a wide variety of ways on how to promote your expertise. We'll talk about special event publicity. Um, you authors who do book signings and you speakers, you'll be interested in this if any of you are from nonprofits. Uh, we've got some tips for you as well, and then we'll also talk about some ways to promote your website. And finally, we've got some fun stuff and miscellaneous things that I really didn't have a category for. So I threw those in at the end. But first, before I get started, I want to take a poll. And I'm going to ask you a question, and I'm going to ask you to answer it. Let me get my poll box here. And you should see the poll on your screen. And the question is, how would you rate your experience with publicity? Are you a publicity pup who needs a lot of paper training? Are you about average? I know the basic publicity tricks. Are you a top dog, best of breed, best of show, but always still learning? I want to see where your knowledge level is um, in the publicity area. About 60% of you have voted already. I, these polls are really cool. And this is 
Oh, you're almost all done voting. Those of you who haven't voted yet, take the one that's about the closest to where you are. Okay, I'm going to leave it open for about a couple more seconds. Pick the one that you think is the closest. Hi, Dan. Great to see you here. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Let's close it down. And I'm going to share the results with you so you can see what other kinds of dogs are here with us. 56% of you are publicity pups who need a lot of paper training. About 35% are average and 9% of you are top dogs. Best of breed, best of show, but always learning. So that's great. Okay, so we got a lot of newbies um, here today and that is good because we've got something for everybody. We have a lot of new stuff and we have um, tips for middle to average publicity hounds and hopefully some new things for those of you who say you are best of breed. And you know what, that doesn't surprise me because if you've been following me for a while, you ought to be best of breed. Let's kick it off by talking about how to work with traditional media. Now, I'm gonna go through these really fast if you've got any questions, Steph, Steffi, hi, I see you. <laughs> yes, you're in here, we can see you. If you've got any questions, um, you can write them in the questions box or in the box underneath the video if you are watching the rebroadcast. And I'm gonna go fast, so here we go. And if you see an idea that you think interests you, would you write it down on a sheet of paper? Just make a note of it because periodically, as we go through this, I'm gonna ask you which ones of these you would like to try. This first one comes from my special report number four on how to write crisp, compelling letters to the editor. I think this is one of the best ways to get into big national publications. To do that, I suggest that you comment on something already published. They love to get letters commenting on stories they've written, even if you didn't like the story or even if you're taking exception to an editorial stand or something a columnist said. Lead with your expertise. You can start off the first paragraph by saying something like, um, as a publicity expert and a former newspaper editor, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. So you can lead with your expertise right up front so people know that you are an expert who is lending your expert opinion. Be very careful to adhere to the length limit. Check the letters to the editor page. There's usually a little box there that tells you exactly how many words you should write. Don't go over that word limit or they may be chopping things out of your letter that you don't want chopped. Special report number 13, how to recycle your publicity. If you are doing interviews for TV or radio, this is a really good question to ask. Who else do you know who might be interested in having me as a guest, particularly if you're doing radio interviews? A lot of these people, they all chum around in the same circles and they, are, they have a variety <clears throat> of online discussion boards and things like that. And my friend Wayne Kelly told me that if somebody asked him this question, he would be happy to tell them names of other radio talk show hosts or DJs who might want to book you. So keep that in mind. This next one comes from my special report on how to get booked on radio shows and get invited back. There's a service called RadioGuestList.com. It's free and it's a wonderful resource if you want to be a radio guest or a guest on somebody's podcast or <clears throat> maybe a talk show guest expert. And it also works on the other end. It's a service for producers who need guests. It's a service for podcasters who need guest experts. And all you have to do is go to radioguestlist.com and you can subscribe for free. And I'm pretty sure they'll, 
they also have a couple of paid services. They'll try to upsell you to something a little bit more. But I would start out here and see how it works for you. I've heard really good things about this service. Next, how to create valuable TV publicity. TV loves props. And there you can see, here in this picture on TV, you can see I'm there with my dog. And um, it's W station, WDOG, as you can see. And it's Joan and, does anybody know the name of my dog? I want to see how many of you have been following me for a while. I write about her occasionally in my newsletter. Does anybody know the name of my dog? Oh, Dan got it. Dan spelled it wrong, but Dan, I'll give you credit. Mary got it correctly. Yeah, the dog's name is Bogey, B-O-G-I-E. <laughs> Tanya got it. Congratulations. By the way, props. Think dogs. If you can ever bring a dog on the set, they love that. They love kids. I saw somebody from, I think it was Home Depot or one of the big box stores, bring a backyard grill onto the set of, um, of, a, of a, one of those feature shows to show how to grill out before Memorial Day, and it worked beautifully. They also love food. So if you're a cookbook author and you want to demonstrate how to make a meal, food works really well on TV sets. By the way, that cute photo that I made up here, I made it at a site called Photo Funnier. Dot com and you'll see a couple more re really cool photos. I love this site. It's free and I made this photo in less than 30 seconds. It's a lot of fun. Next, how to win the support and respect of newspaper editorial boards. I couldn't find a picture. <laughs> of newspaper editorial boards, and I found this one on one of the stock photo sites, and I roared when I saw it. Look at all the guys in the back row. Oh, the, and the two on that are flanking the two women in front, they all have the same faces. So let's pretend that they are a newspaper editorial board. These are great people to go to to ask for a meeting when you're working to promote a worthy cause or issue. You are not going to pitch them with a story. That's not what they're there for. You're going you're gonna to go to talk to them about what it is that you're trying to do. And if you, let's say that you're um, for or against maybe some local legislation in the town where you live or some federal legislation or something that's happening at your state house or a controversial maybe environmental regulation that might be um, being passed and you want their support, you can go and talk to them and they will be happy to listen. But I, you know, I can't promise that they're going to agree to support your cause because they have their own opinions on the way things should go. And, um, you know, if you've got a really important fundraiser coming up, for example, you know, they're always behind the United Way and, you know, the really big fundraisers in town. So give it a shot. You just might get um, some editorial coverage out of it. And who knows? They may be um, your most ardent backers. I love this next tip. This is on smart tips for free cheap ads. And this is for you speakers who are always getting nickeled and dimed to death by event planners who always want you to come down on your fee. And they're all, everybody wants you to come down on your fee. Um, I've heard speakers say one, one negotiating uh, ta little trick that you have is you can ask for a free ad in their professional publication. If, it's, if you're speaking to a convention, they might have um, a convention program and you can ask for maybe a full page ad in it in exchange for, um, if, in exchange for coming down on your fee. There are all kinds of things you can negotiate. Um, if it's a, you can negotiate an extra night or two in the hotel, especially if it's at a resort, you can take your family and enjoy the weekend. And um, I, I just love this tip and I have used it several times and it usually works because a lot of times they can't sell ads in their program. So it's a nice way to get in front of the audience again. 
How to interview. This comes from my the very first special report I wrote called How to Keep the Media from Making a Mess of Your Story. This is the number one way to, you can't ensure accuracy, but you can improve the accuracy of a story that's being written about you if you talk slowly during the interview. Don't, don't worry that the reporter is going to think that there's something wrong. Don't worry about insulting the reporter. I worked as a reporter for many years. Dan, you worked as a reporter too. Did you appreciate it when people who you were interviewing talk slowly? I sure did. Because it, yes, Dan says, yes, he did, because it helped me get the exact quotes down. And um, they, want, they want to get the quotes right. They want a factual story. Dan, did you hate having to write corrections? Oh, I hated having to write corrections when I screwed up. And anything that you can do will help to help the reporter get it right. They will welcome. So talk slowly during interviews. Here's another one. Questions you can expect journalists to ask during an interview. What's the worst business mistake you've made? This is not a trick question. This is a legitimate question, and I think it's an interesting question. If anybody asked me this when I was being interviewed, I wouldn't hesitate. Um, I would say that the worst business mistake I have ever made was not to embrace technology early on. I am not a, um, I, uh, I don't have a, the, the technology side of my brain um, is really sluggish and it takes me a long time to catch on to all the new programs, the platforms, and, and because of the online training that I do and, and all of this, it, 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 it's a long learning curve for me and I wish that I had taken some classes early on so that I wouldn't struggle with it as much. That's my worst business mistake. So get ready for this. They're not always going to ask it, but if they do, you should be ready. Special Report 28, the news conference, when to hold it and how to do it right. Press conferences are great events to stage when the news is really bad and you want to dump the news all at once. The truth is, journalists hate press conferences because they all walk away with the, with the same story. So if your news is really good, you're going to get a lot farther delivering customized pitches to reporters than you are holding a big news conference and then if nobody comes then then you look silly so save the news conferences for when the news is bad does the face on on the person standing here um with the sign that says please take care of my dog look like anybody you know Do you recognize the face? Forget about the hair. And I think there's a little bit of hair on the chin, too. Forget about that. Does anybody... <laughs> Dan says, squeaky from. <laughs> Margaret, you got it. Margaret says, it's me. It is me. That's my face. I love photofunnia.com. It's a really... <laughs> it is such a fun program. And... I have found so many uses for those photos. You could put yourself on a wanted poster. You could put yourself on a New York Times, a, a, a Times Square billboard in New York. You can put yourself on, a, on the wall of a museum. You could put yourself in a magazine. So write down Photofunnia. Dot com and sometime in the next day or two, go on over there and take a look. It's just hysterical. I have had more fun with this photo tool than any other I have played with. And what I love about it is you can create, I created this photo here in maybe 45 seconds, maybe less than a minute. <laughs> so there you go. 
Pitching tips. Wow. Pitching is really hard because there is so much competition, so much competition for for people's time and attention, and they are getting pitched by everybody. So let me share some of my best pitching tips with you. This comes from my special report number five on how to identify story ideas with your company or organization. One of the easiest ways to do this is to tie your story into whatever that season happens to be or whatever the upcoming season happens to be. Now, if you want to get into a national magazine's Christmas edition and you're tying your story to Christmas, let's say we've got a professional organizer here and if you are perhaps teaching people how to keep their houses organized during the holidays, which is really hard, when you, especially when you've got kids, you're going to want to be pitching a good six months ahead of time. So you're going to want to be pitching in July. You can never pitch too early. You can always pitch too late. So try to think, even you authors, let's say you've written a mystery that takes place in the summertime and it's a really good beach read. Tie it to the summer. Pitch some of the bloggers um, and suggest your book as a beach read. Offer it to them. Um, it might be chiclet, you know, perfect for, for the beaches. Um, it, your, your book may take place in the winter time, in which case that would be a good time for pitching. And the truth is the media always cover winter, spring, summer, and fall, especially the first day of each of the four seasons. So this is sort of a no-brainer. And put, put this on your reminder list and see if you've got some kind of a topic that can tie in. How to write the perfect pitch letter. When you're writing a pitch letter to a journalist, one of the most important things you can do is to let the reporter know that you're familiar with their work and their audience. I don't think you should necessarily lead with the story idea. Often, I've seen pitches that come to me, and I love these pitches. They'll say, I've subscribed to your blog for about the last two years, and I saw the article you wrote last week on blah, 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 and I have an idea that I think might tie in. Um, just checking to see if you'd be interested in this as a guest blog post, and then they pitch the idea. They're telling me right off the bat, they know who I am, they know what I do, they know what topics I'm interested in, they've been following me, and they want to pitch me their idea, which I'm really open to because they've just proven to me that they're not coming in out of left field. And i got to tell you, I get pitched a lot. I can tell within about three seconds whether somebody knows what I do. And if they haven't convinced me in the first sentence, I just click delete. So let the reporter know right away that you know who they are and what they do. And the only way you can find that out is to do your homework. Next, special report number nine, how to snag free publicity for your new business. It doesn't really have to be a new business. It can be an existing business. If you are the local angle to a national or an international story, this could include politics, it, it could include the environment, it could include technology, business stories. Whenever you hear something on the international or national news and you're saying to yourself, aha, I'm part of that story. I have something to add to that. Pitch yourself to your local media as the, and use these words, the local angle. That's media jargon. Use that phrase. I'm the local angle to the national story of the newest cure for cancer or whatever it happens to be. Um, because in the newsroom, we use that lingo all the time. You know, oh, we got this big breaking news story on um, you know, the stock market's crashing. You know, we need a local angle. You know, keep your eyes open, everybody, for the local angle because we need a local story for tomorrow. So you could be it. Special Report 14, how to piggyback story ideas 
on to holidays and anniversaries. This is another really easy one. Holidays, think major and minor holidays. Think any anniversaries, the 70th birthday of whatever. Uh, how can you help people save time, save money, and feel better during the holidays? You authors, your books might be the perfect escape during one of these holidays. Maybe during the Thanksgiving holiday, for example, when <laughs> a lot of people don't like Thanksgiving because they have to spend it with their families. Um, and they, they just want to sort of go off by themselves and, and read or whatever. And maybe your, book, maybe your book is nonfiction on how to get along better with your family. Um, try to tie your book into this. And again, the holidays and anniversaries are evergreen. They're evergreen. The media has to cover these things. And they're look, a lot of times, they're coming up short for ideas. 25, how to pitch reporters over the phone and make every second count. When the reporter says hello, you identify yourself, and the first thing you ask is, is this a good time to talk? You don't launch into your pitch because they may be on deadline. And if you launch into your pitch, it's going to show them that you're not media savvy and you don't know how the game is played. So I, 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 some people just say, is, recommend that you say, is this a good time to talk? I would identify yourself really quickly. Just give your name and say, is this a good time to talk? about a story idea, and then they'll tell you either yes or no. If it's not a good time to talk, ask what time is good for you to call them back, and don't expect them to call you. You want to be proactive and call them. Next, Special Report 26, how to make your email pitch stand out in the email jungle. Um, this is such a simple, simple idea and it's really effective but almost nobody does it this is what the subject line of your email pitch would look like you always use the words story idea capitalize colon right at the beginning of the subject line story idea what you should know about hiring Millennials whenever they see story idea they're gonna perk up because they know it's probably not a press release. They know you're probably media savvy. And if, you're, if the next part of what comes after story idea is of interest to them, and you should know whether or not it's of interest to them, if you've done your homework, they will probably open your email. So use those two words, story, idea. A lot of publicists who I know do this as well. So you can start acting like a publicist. Number 35, how to be the local angle to how to be the local angle to national stories. This is very similar to the other one. This is sort of a different take on it. And so many people forget about the wire services. The Associated Press still serves, it's a new syndicate, and it takes stories from member papers, and then it shares those stories with other member papers. And a lot of people never think to call the Associated Press to give them a story. And a lot, just because a lot of people never think of it, they think of calling their local TV station, or their local newspaper, or whoever. And the, the AP is sort of their you know, down way back, they're down underneath and they're always forgotten about. So just for the heck of it, you might try calling the Associated Press office near you and it's usually located in within a major newspaper in your town. Um, here in Milwaukee, we have the Milwaukee Journal uh, Sentinel and I believe the AP offices are still housed in the newspaper building. And if you're not sure, just go online and um, go to um, ap.org and you can find where all the offices are located. Get, pitch them. Give them a scoop. They love scoops. And they've got a frequently asked questions 
um, list on their page and you take just learn a little bit about the Associated Press before you pitch them so you know what they are. Oh, this next one is one of my very favorites. It's from Special Report 37, how to tie your product service cause or issue to the weather. Don't forget about your TV station's meteorologist. Reporters detest having to write weather stories. That it's a bad day. <laughs> If you, if you come into work and there are 14 inches of snow and you're assigned to do a weather story or there's flooding or it's 110 degrees and humid, it's, we didn't like covering these. And if you can't get through to the reporters, the meteorologists will sometimes mention you on their little weather show their weather forecast, and they only have um, just a short amount of time to do it, but they love being pitched. So if you can tie your story to the weather somehow, I saw a local weather person talk about, um, I live in Wisconsin, and in the, in the wintertime, we have a lot of snow piled up on roofs and they cause these roofs to cave in. And there was a, I think it was a hardware store that was selling snow rakes for the roofs and they got on TV after one of the gigantic snowstorms and they knew that some of the roofs actually were collapsing. I think this was a couple of winters ago. And um, they got publicity for it. So keep the meteorologist in mind as well. Okay, I'm curious as to which of these ideas you think you might want to use. I'm going to answer a couple questions here. Stephanie, I'll answer your question via email. Kathleen asks, what are the usual deadlines for morning or afternoon publications? For, um, more, for morning publications, they are busiest in the afternoon. They usually come into the office late morning and they're on deadline from about, um, the reporters at least, are on deadline from about maybe 2 until about 5 o'clock and they're all hustling for afternoon papers and there are not many afternoon papers around anymore. Uh, they come in very early in the morning. Um, I used to come in at 6.30 and we were on deadline straight up until about 10 o'clock and the presses would roll about 10.30. So um, I, I don't know of that many afternoon papers anymore. Um, what's the best time or day to send a story idea or he wants to know. It all depends on what media outlet you are pitching. So as you start to build relationships with journalists, you want to ask each one of them, what's the best time and day to contact you and how do you wish to be contacted? Would you like me to email you? Would you like me to maybe pitch you via a direct message on Twitter? The journal journalists are all over the social media sites trolling for sources. Stephanie asks, what's the difference between a publicist and a PR firm? There are publicists who work for PR firms. PR firms generally work for a client on the overall public relations campaign, and that can include crisis communications, it can include um, um, annual, uh, corporate annual reports, it could include getting publicity, it could include social media, and a publicist only concerns themselves with getting publicity. And some of them will also do social media for their clients. Mary says she's going to use story idea in her email headlines, uh, being a local angle, and prepare a worse mistake response. Good. Margaret says, I like the letters to the editor, and I will also check out radioguestlist.com. Also ask for a free ad from meeting planners with little cash. <laughs> or, or Margaret, ask for an ad for meeting planners with no cash, because many of them have no cash. And anybody who's a speaker <laughs> knows that I'm telling the truth. Okay. Let's talk about content creation. Content is king, and we have to write original, persuasive, natural, useful, informative content. In special report number six, 
how to write how-to articles that position you as an expert. I share one of my very favorite tools. This was my, uh, this is one of my top three favorite tools. It's the Tweak Your Biz Title Generator, or it's, I think it's called the Tweak Your Biz, yeah, the Tweak Your Biz Title Generator at this link, and it's free. And if you can't think of a headline, or if you can't think of an article, or a blog post to write, or content to create, you come over here, and you just go to this link here, and you go to this area right here, and you type in your topic. So I typed in the word stress. And then it's going to ask you here, is it a noun or is it a verb? And I clicked on noun. And then you click submit. And here's what I got back. Take a minute to look at these. This, this you're looking at only one dozen of hundreds of potential headlines that I got back when I used this tool. My slide obviously isn't big enough to put the whole thing on. This is, only, this is a minuscule slice of all the headlines it delivered to me. It even has a category for celebrities. It even has a sex category where it gives you some sizzling sex-related headlines for whatever your topic happens to be. So use this when you can't think of anything to write about or you can't think of, of a compelling headline for a blog post. It's a terrific tool. You're going to be hooked on this. 52 publicity tips for kick butt press releases. Tip number one, don't rely on press releases to get Big, gigantic stories. Don't rely on them. Don't only rely on press releases to get big, gigantic stories. If you want big, gigantic stories, I recommend that you deliver a customized pitch. And if they're interested in covering you, you offer the press release as backup material so they can get all the facts they need. Um, maybe 20 years ago, we, a lot of us use press releases to get the great big stories. The way that press releases today are of most value to you is when you post them online through one of the press release distribution sites, and they actually are distributed to journalists who specifically have asked to receive press releases on specific topics. People ask me what my favorite one is, and I'm not saying this just because Dan is on the line. Um, it's guaranteed press releases. Dan's uh, Janelle service, he gives fabulous customer service. I send all of my publicity hounds to him. He can write the release for you, or he can distribute it, or he can do both. Also, don't bother with the free quote-unquote distribution services. The dirty little secret is that these services, most of them don't distribute anything. They simply park your press release on their site, and then they, you sort of wait for somebody to discover it. And people who are looking for news, they seldom go to these free sites. They're going to the big sites, and um, Dan will do you Dan will do you well. So use Dan Janelle's guaranteed free press releases. Also, include hashtags. In releases, the hashtag is the little pound sign, and you put it before a keyword. It's the new search tool. Special Report 16, how to write tip sheets that command attention. A tip sheet is a list of tips. That's all it is. Keep it to one sheet. Keep it nice and short. Use from five to seven tips. Use an odd number of tips. And then when you're done with the tip sheet, you can also turn it into an infographic. So you can have it in two different forms. You can have it as, as just, a, just a PDF tip sheet that you share with the media. It can be on, a, on your blog, it can be, you can offer it as, as backup, you can offer it to sort of sweeten the deal when you pitch journalists, and there are so many free infographic 
templates online. I know HubSpot has several of them. Um, I'm trying to think what some of the other ones are. Just go on to Google and Google free infographic templates. And they have some really slick ones on there. And these, you can't do these really fast. They're going to take some time. But I like this one. It's very attractive. And you, um, media outlets might want to use your infographic if it looks as good as this one does. Number 19, how to use polls, surveys, and white papers that brand you as an expert. You can add a poll to your Facebook page and you can go over to um, apps.facebook.com slash my hyphen polls and click on that get started now button and it will walk you through. You could even publish the result of your poll, especially if you have a lot of fans on your page. And if you have a lot of, if a lot of people are interacting with it now, this is not a scientific poll, but you could do fun polls, you can do serious polls, you could do polls to find out what people are most concerned about. What topics do they want to see you share more on? So you don't have to do polls only for publicity, but there are so many of these new poll tools out there too that it's just one more way to see how people are thinking and to share what they're thinking with others. Number 20, how to write and market profitable special reports. Um, I started these as, this was my first info product about 15 years ago. And I started out writing um, on very narrow topics. So you want to choose a topic that's an inch wide and you want to go a mile deep with it. And you only have to write a five page PDF. You don't want to go any more than five pages because if you get any more, your topic might be too broad, and I would think about splitting that into two instead of doing just one. It's a very inexpensive info product. You could sell these for three bucks a piece. You can sell them for five bucks a piece. You can sell them for 10 bucks a piece, whatever you want to. But the lower your price, the more apt people are to buy multiples of this, then there are all kinds of things you can do with your special reports. You can take several of them on the same topic and turn them into an ebook and sell it um, on Amazon. You can do just all kinds of things with them. And people like them because they may only want information on one topic. And these are so easy to create. You don't pay anything. You have no overhead whatsoever except for maybe your shopping cart or whatever program you're using to deliver these or take payments. Number 67, publicity tips for professional speakers and trainers. I love this tip. Speaking to a group, ask the person who brought you in to give you the name of the newsletter editor and pitch the newsletter editor on writing a short summary of your presentation for their newsletter or maybe even a longer article. I have done this and I have gotten in front of the audience that I spoke to twice and I've also gotten in, fr gotten in front of the audience that did not come to hear me. So keep this tip in mind when you're speaking. And the other great thing about it is the newsletter editor is going to be um, more eager to let you write for their publication, knowing that one of his or her colleagues already brought you in to speak. You already have credibility. Uh, Kaya asks, is Dan's site guaranteed press releases? I believe it is. Dan, what's the, U, what's the web um, URL for your site? Just go to Google and type in guaranteed press releases. That's what I did today. And press, press release sender.com. Press release sender.com. Okay. I am going backwards, and I don't want to go backwards. There we go. Number 23, profitable publicity tips to jumpstart your consulting business. 
pitch success stories about your clients with their permission. These can be success stories that you are a part of, or they might be success stories that you're not a part of. And if you've got an ongoing relationship, let's say with the business media, and you can get publicity for your consulting client, do you think you are going to be of greater value to them? Anybody? You bet. You bet you are. Okay, Mary says, check this out. I want to try it. Magic Links. Magiclinks.org. Perfect for creators like you on YouTube. Okay, we'll try it. Thank you, Mary. Magic Links, L I N K S dot com. Special Report 30 Briefs, Fillers, and Quizzes The Shortest, Easiest Articles You'll Ever Write. Not Everything Has to Be a Thought Piece. Print media people especially are always looking for these short three or four inch, we call them blurbs or briefs, to, to fill odd size holes on a page. The next time you pick up a major magazine, flip through there and look to see how many of these little briefs are in there. And briefs are wonderful. And one of my special reports walks you through how to do all of these. Quizzes are wonderful they're, because they're interactive. Okay. And I am giving you two polls in today's presentation to make this interactive and to sort of keep you on your toes. And it just makes it a, a heck of a lot more fun. So you can use quizzes online. You can use them for television. Um, use a quiz if you're on a, a guest on a radio talk show. And, of course, use them for print. How to publish a profitable electronic newsletter. I hope. I hope, I hope you are all collecting email addresses at your website and you are building an email list of people who are giving you permission to mark to them whenever you want to until they say stop. My email list is probably my most valuable possession and I use it every week to sell stuff and you can too if you're going to commit I recommend you commit to something on a regular basis if you're doing a newsletter and it doesn't have to be as long as mine it can be a simple tip of the week I want to see you mail at the same time on the same day and do it consistently don't miss any days. If you're going on vacation, um, I use a Weber, and I can queue up my newsletter to go out a week ahead of time if, if I know I'm going to be gone for a week. So it looks like I'm not even gone. You have to train your readers like little puppies. You have to train them to expect to see you appear in their email box at the same time on the same day consistently and if you can train them and all of a sudden you don't show up and you're giving them great content they're going to email you and say hey where are you did you publish today I wonder if it got kicked into my spam folder because I didn't see it yet that's when you know you're doing something right number 39 tips for writing eye-catching headlines Use power words. Look at the front page of the paper the guy is reading. What photo tool do you think I used to create that newspaper that says use power words with my smiling face? Photo funnier. Photo funnier. Power words include all the ones you see on this list. Free, best ever, new, improved, more, better. Powerful, authentic, simple, easy, smart, save is a good one, win, helping. There are hundreds of power words, and I want to recommend a book that I 
I want you to buy this because you will, this will be right next to your computer. It's next to mine. And it's called Words That Sell by Richard Bayon. And there is also a companion to it called Phrases That Sell. And you can get, you can get it on Amazon. It's inexpensive. And you will thank me a hundred times over once you see how cool this book is. I use phrases that sell a lot for my sales copy when I'm putting um, sales pages together and, and trying to sell you on the benefits of buying the product that I want you to buy from me. Number 38, how to make big money and promote yourself with telesound seminars and webinars. Yes, you guessed it, that is me. Present valuable content. Involve your audience. Make a compelling offer at the end. That's the reason the vast majority of people who do online training do online training, because they want to make a compelling offer so that they can help the people who love the great content they saw during the presentation. And I will make an offer at the end. And for heaven's sakes, have fun. Use, don't be afraid to use goofy photos like this one. Try to stay away from the schlock. They're just the really cliche stock photos that you see everywhere. You can spot them from 20 paces. They're really bad. And a lot of, even the big major companies have these just horrible stock photos at their websites. Just try to do stuff that's do, do fun stuff, you know, have fun polls, involve your audience. Number 46, tips for rewriting your boring bio. Who's your best friend? Put that in your bio. I want to ask you, how many of you think your bio is boring? Anybody? Do you ever read your bio and say to yourself, wow, this is more potent than Ambien? The next time I can't get to sleep, I think I might just come to my computer and start reading people's bios. Is anybody's bio boring or do you think your bio is good? What do you think? Tell me in the questions box. Can you guys hear me? Am I coming through loud and clear? Uh, Pamela says, I'll have to read it again. Clarice says, my dog's bio on my page is better than mine, but mine is okay. Stephanie says, my bio is good. Kathleen says, yes, she likes, oh, yes, I think she says her bio is boring. Jan says, hers is so-so. Margaret says, it is on one of your templates. Very good, Margaret. I sell, um, I think you're talking about the media kit templates that I sell uh, with Joel Friedlander at his site. Uh, Stephanie says it could always be revised. So here are some questions that you can ask yourself, some things that you can put into your bio, aside from who's your best friend? What's on your bucket list? What's the craziest thing you've done? Who's your hero? What's the make and model of your first car? Any fond memories of that first car? What was your favorite childhood toy? What's your fondest memory? These, this is all good fodder, fodder for interesting bios. If you followed me for any period of time, you know I am fanatic about promoting your expertise. And this is what this section's about. A great place to start is at gravatar.com. Um, one of the secrets for building your celebrity image is that you want your photo everywhere. Did you ever go to blogs and you go to um, to write a, a comment in at somebody's blog post and you see all these other comments with these little squares next to it that are grayed out or it looks like a little pawn on a chessboard or they're anonymous? I see that all the time and I wonder 
what are those people thinking? You want your photo everywhere. A gravatar is a globally recognized image that follows you from site to site, and it appears next to your name. And I don't know how the technology works. This isn't my side of the brain. I don't care. All I know is that I made my gravatar once. I did it several years ago, and it shows up everywhere. And this is free. It shows up on blog posts, in discussion forums, all over the place. So go to gravatar.com and create your avatar. And just do it once and you're done. And if you ever want to update it, I'm pretty sure you can go back and do that. Visitors also expect to see your picture on your home page. I'm astonished at how many people don't have their pictures on their home page. Why, why do you do that? Don't bury it under an about button. I want to see your smiling face right at the top. I want to see your face greeting me when I land at your home page. Number 15, 15 steps for university and college media relations. I don't think any of the people who are attending this live are from universities or colleges. At least I didn't see anybody in the comments box say they were. But this is a tip that any organization can do. You don't have to be from a college or a university. Publish a searchable experts directory at your website. This one is from Virginia Tech, and you can bet that journalists use these a lot. Here's the little search box here. So you can come over and do a search for whoever the expert happens to be. Make sure the expert is comfortable dealing with the media. If they're not, don't put them in the experts directory. Also make sure full contact information is there as well. Special report number 31, sell more products and services by getting and giving powerful testimonials. I was so excited when I found out about this tool. I have really shied away from doing video testimonials because they're such a hassle. They're just a monumental hassle. And technologically, you know, for, for my side of the technology, there's not a whole lot on my side of the technology brain. I always found them really challenging until somebody told me about Super Tin Tin. You can go onto Skype and record video calls using Super Tin Tin to actually do the recording. And this can be this big window here can be the person who's giving the testimonial and you can be down here. Or you can be the big person up here, and the person giving the testimonial would be down here. I like this one better, because I want the person who's talking about me and saying how great I am to be nice and big. And you, you install it right onto your computer, and bing, bang, boom, it works effortlessly. You want to practice with it a little bit, but it has a really short learning curve. And during one of my recent promotions, um, I used it and I got about six really nice video testimonials. Now, the quality is not as good because, again, it's on Skype. But you know what? I am seeing major news outlets like Fox News and CNN. They're using Skype interviews on their new shows. So if they can use them, I can use them, and you can use them. Mary, I think it works on a Mac. I'm not really sure. You'll have to go over and see. I think it does. I hope it does because you're going to fall in love with it. And I got to tell you, it's cheap. I didn't pay a lot for it. I am all about free publicity. Number 40, 42 publicity tips for authors and small publishers. Authors become an expert in a topic and promote your expertise more than you promote your book. I can hear the fiction authors groaning. How can I possibly be an expert? I don't know what I would be an expert in. Well, I'm looking at a castle right now. And if you're, I don't know, medieval? Is this from the medieval era, maybe? If you have a medieval romance novel, 
maybe you can be an expert on castles. I know a lot of fiction authors, and they have told me how much research they do to make sure that the facts are accurate in their novels. And if you've done a lot of research on a topic, you are somewhat of an expert on it, so why not promote your expertise? And if somebody happens to cover you, guess what they're going to mention? It's that expertise that really gives you credibility more than your book does. They say, yeah, book lends credibility. You're more credible if, you've, if you have written a book. But you want to know the real truth. The truth is that there is an author under every rock out there. There are millions of authors out there. There are far more authors than there are experts. So find a topic, become an expert in it, and promote your expertise. Number 41, how to collaborate with other speakers, authors, and consultants to create products and publicity. This gal is selling both flowers and lemonade. This is something you could do. Maybe you can, if you sell lemonade, go find somebody who sells flowers and set up a stand together on the side of the road. Reach out to somebody whose target audience is the same as yours, but they sell a different product or service. Now, one of the things I do, I also reach out to people who I consider direct competitors. And Dan and I, Dan Janelle and I, do some of the same things. He's a publicity expert too. I've reached out to many, many publicity experts, many publicists. And we have done webinars together. We've done teleseminars. We have created products together. Um, if you're creating a, a physical product, you can have some costs involved in it. And it really helps to be able to have somebody there who can split the expenses with you and pay for half of the, you know, the expensive binder. Or if you're doing a, if you're using a fulfillment service, they can pay half of that. It's just great. And you get their brain, too. Two brains are better than the price of one. So look for joint venture partners to collaborate with. Special event publicity. Number special report 10. Publicity tips for your fundraiser or special events. This is sort of a no-brainer, but it's worth reminding you to submit your event to every possible calendar you can think of. There are TV calendars. There's a calendar on your public television uh, the station. There are calendars on local radio. Newspapers have calendars. Your business journals have calendars in the back of the paper. There are calendars in magazines. Remember big national magazines. If you want to get into a publication like um, I'm here in the Midwest and the big magazine here is Midwest Living. If I wanted to get a cider festival calendar item in the September issue, I'm going to be wanting, I'm going to want to pitch that from four to six months ahead of the publication date just to make sure I'm going to call the magazine to see when they want the calendar item. And usually the calendar items will have a little blurb in there. So even though you're submitting to all these different media their deadlines are all different. I think meetup.com is a fabulous site for getting the word out about your event. And it's like you can find all kinds of people over there who you can contact and, and people who right in your town who would be interested in your event. Um, don't forget to post it at your own website. And if you're a member of your Chamber of Commerce, you want to give them your events as well. Special Report 18 is about clever contests that will tempt reporters to call. Authors, how about telling readers to submit photos of themselves reading your book in unusual places? I know a lot of authors who ask for pictures of readers holding up the book cover in front of the Eiffel Tower or Big Ben or wherever they happen to be around the world. You could have a fun contest related to that. You've got lots of great photos to share on Facebook. This is the stuff people love. They love to see themselves 
on everybody else's pages. So think about this, and, and even if it's even if you don't have readers reading things all over the world, you can probably think of all kinds of other fun contests to do. Look to see what other people are doing. Number 36, how to clinch a media sponsorship for your fundraiser or your special event. Um, you are going to want to approach media outlets like TV stations and newspapers, maybe business journals to sponsor major events in your town. And the biggest thing that you have to do to get them to be your sponsor and give you free advertising, because that's the reason you're doing this, they're going to give you free ads, you have got to prove to them what's in it for them. What do they get out of it? Will you let them bring their newspapers to this event and hand out 500 newspapers at the local road race? Will you get them microphone time if they're sponsoring a breakfast? Will you turn over to them the names and addresses of all the people who are buying tickets to your event? Think of everything possible to give to them and, and to sort of sweeten the deal. Because if you can get a media sponsorship, you know, on TV, for example, here's a great one too. You can invite a local news anchor to be the keynote speaker at an event. <laughs> if you do that, do you think you're going to be on the nightly news that night, the night of the dinner where they spoke? Any guesses? Do you think they're going to have a little, even a 15-second blurb showing your local anchor speaking at your event? Any guesses? Yes? Anybody? You betcha. Yes, they would. Great. Absolutely. You will be on the news that night. Number 42, tips for letting reporters and bloggers experience your story, not just write about it. If you're teaching a scrapbooking class in your community, invite a local mommy blogger or a craft blogger to your class and tell her that you'd like to help her start a scrapbook. When they are directly involved in your story and doing something as opposed to reporting on it with a notebook and a pencil from the sidelines or, or they've got the video going on their, on their phone, you're going to end up with a much better story because they are going to experience, it's going to be an experience for them. And these are much more interesting topics. I was assigned to cover a, um, a hypnotist when I was a reporter who came to my the town where I was working, um, he was doing mass hypnosis for weight loss. And I asked my editor if it would be okay if I actually was hypnotized. So I could write about what it was like, and it was a fabulous story. And I lost 15 pounds, and after that, I came back later and did a follow-up story the next time this hypnotist rolled through town, because it was actually a fundraiser for us. So our, story, our newspaper got two great stories instead of only one, and it was a much better story with me being able to experience what it was like to be hypnotized, what it was like to not feel like I was blacked out, but just to feel like I was really tired and that I wanted to obey the person on stage. It was, it was very interesting. It was a great experience, and I'd be hypnotized again in a minute. Number 43, the do's and don'ts of offering food to the media and to bloggers. Invite them to lunch, but don't assume that you will pay, especially if you're dealing with a journalist from a traditional media outlet. The best way to handle this so that you don't embarrass them because they may work under ethics policies that prohibit them from accepting anything of value like a meal. You want to ask them before the wait staff comes to the table how they would like to handle it. So you could say something like, um, Joe, I'd be happy to buy your lunch, but how would you like to handle it? And Joe will either come back and say, thanks, that'd be great. 
or he'll come back and say, no thanks, um, uh, why don't I just buy yours, I'm just going to write it off on my expense account anyway. Or he might come back and say, um, I prefer that we go Dutch, that we each pay for our own lunch. And however Joe wants to handle it, that's how you handle it. Don't dive for the check. Number 24, how to create publicity at trade shows and conferences. These can be boring places <laughs> to hang out. They can be boring for journalists to cover them. It can be boring to be in the booth. It can be boring to be as an attendee. But they don't have to be boring if you know you can get publicity out of it. Ask the conference organizer if you can have a list of media people who will be attending with the contact information. Not all of them will give it to you. Some of them might. And if you can figure out who those media are, call ahead of time and arrange to have lunch or coffee out in the snack area with the journalist and just offer to bring the journalist up to speed on what's going on in your industry and offer to meet them. And yeah, you can pitch a story or two, but you don't have to. They will appreciate it if you are simply offering yourself as a resource. Number 45, oh, I love this one. How to get national publicity from your own holiday or your day, week, or month of the year. There is national, lawyer, love your, it's the 15th annual Love Your Lawyer Day. Um, <laughs> look at this baby. Now let me get this straight. You want me to use love and lawyer in the same sentence? Yes, because we want to get into Chase's calendar of events. Chase's is the, it's like a big telephone book, and it's a paper directory, and it's on the desk of thousands of media people all over the world. And to get your event into Chase's, you have, you have to prove to Chase's that people actually are celebrating your event, that they're doing specific types of things. So you want to try to get into Chase's, but you don't want to try to get in the first year because you're not going to be able to su supply proof like photos or video or anything that people are actually doing things. And um, there are some specific things you have to do to get in. And I give you some great tips. On, in this special report about how to piggyback off of all these unusual day, weeks, and months of the year. They don't even have to be yours. They can, you can use other people's days, weeks, or months of the year. There's nothing against that. There's no law against it. Next, how to use free publicity to attract and keep employees. If you hire employees, explain all the perks that you offer them and put this at your website and a perk might be take your pets to work day. There are all kinds of unusual perks. The millennials that who a lot of people are trying to attract, they want um, they want to experience things, they want to group work in teams and if you've got some really cool perks for the people in your office, make sure you share that. That could even be a new story. Next, number 17, powerful ways to promote your website to draw traffic and boost sales. And here's my tip right here. Ask customers what search terms they use to find your website. Somebody told me a couple years ago that a search term they used to find me was DIY publicity, do-it-yourself publicity. I would have never thought of that in a million years. So now I use DIY publicity in some of my products and at my website, on some of my sales pages, in my blog posts. Also, you want to know what keywords pull traffic better. Is it the key? Now, I would want to know this. Is it the keyword phrase press release or is it the keyword phrase news release? I happen to know it's press release. And when somebody told me this, I started to, <laughs> I switched from news release to press release because I want to pull more traffic. And this report gives you some great ways to spy on your competitors' keywords and to, to there are all kinds of free tools out there that you can see what your competitors are doing so you can do it too. 
Number eight, how to create an online media room and keep the media coming back. Ann Graham has a fabulous media room. She works in the corporate suite as a consultant. And I would recommend that you go over to her media room here at this link at ncgraham.com, just for media, or just go to her homepage and click on media room. She has a fabulous media room. It's really interesting. And she also has put a whole bunch of story ideas and trends that she's seeing right here in the media room. Um, this special report gives you all kinds of terrific ideas and it also leads you to other media rooms that you can take a look at. And yours doesn't have to be as elaborate as Anne's is. You can start small and then just add to it over time. Fun stuff and miscellaneous. This is really fun. How to use humor. I, I devoted Special Report 47 to all different kinds of ways that you can use humor in your press releases, in blog posts, in articles, from the platform. Um, Al, Dr. Al Lippert is a veterinarian here in Wisconsin, and I want to read you his introduction. This is the introduction that he gives to people to read before he comes on stage to speak, and I love it. See if I can bring it up. Chickens and ducks, sheep and llamas. He even fixes skunks so they don't become mamas. He sees miniature mules and pygmy goats, zebras, camels, and giraffes with sore throats. He's operated on cougars, lions, tigers, and bears, monkeys, foxes, ferrets, and hares. For over 27 years, he's been having a ball caring for all kinds of creatures, great and small. Do you like this introduction? Say, hey, yeah, I like it. Kathleen says she loves it. Flora says, absolutely. Clarice says, yeah. Margaret says, it's great. Anna Roop says, it's very creative. Devin says, yes. Teresa says, love it. Publicity Hounds, are your tails wagging? Could you do something like this? Could you do a fun poem as your speaker intro? I'll bet you could. Let me give you an, a very important tip to pass along to you. If you do something like this, you have to make sure that the person introducing you practices this. Because I have had my written introduction read by people who, quite frankly, they can't read. And they get up there and they stumble through it. So what I would do is I would tell the meeting planner who brought me in that I want the, mo the liveliest, most energetic person in the room to read my speaker introduction. And I would ask for the, meet, the meeting plan, a commitment from the meeting planner that she or he would do that for me. As a matter of fact, I would put it in the letter of agreement, even. And they'll, they'll be happy to do this. There's no skin off their back. Because you don't want a beautiful introduction like this to be read by somebody who's going to put the audience to sleep even before Dr. Al gets onto the stage. Special Report 48, 17 Ways to Build Valuable Relationships with Old and New Media. This is a real easy one. It's a no-brainer. Share their content on sites like Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and be sure to tag them. OK, we're almost coming up to the end. I want to do a poll. Let's take a poll. OK, let me find my next poll here and get your pause on your mouse, mice. Oh, I can't find my poll. Hang on just a second here. Where is my poll? OK, there it is. Okay, I'm going to bring it over to where you can see it. And 
Here is my poll. The question is, that's not the right poll. We already did that one. Sorry. Let me close this out. Let me hide this. And I'm going to X out of here. And we're going to try again. Because I want to see how successful I have been. That's not going to work. There you go. OK. Here we go. Here's the question. What will your competitors do if these ideas work for you? They'll think their PR skills have gone to the dogs. They'll be sad as a dog's eye, or that dog won't hunt. What will your competitors be like? I'm the publicity hound. I have to use... <laughs> All these hokey little fun things. <laughs> what will your competitors think? I'm going to keep it open for about 15 more seconds. Only half of you have voted. What do you think they'll do? There's no right or wrong answer. I just want to see what you think they'll do. That dog won't hunt means that dog won't even try to go after publicity. <laughs> Be so upset that you're getting all of it. That's what that means. Okay, four, three, two, one. Okay, I'm going to close it. And I'm going to share it. And here's what you said. 63% of you said they'll think their PR skills have gone to the dogs. 29%, they'll be as sad as a dog's eye. And 8% said, that dog won't hunt. So what that says to me is that I think I've done a pretty good job so far sharing some good tips with you that are brand new to you that you are going to be using. And that makes my tail wag too, Zerania. Okay, Flora says, I belong to a small biz networking group that meets twice a month. Since we introduce ourselves each meeting, it's a good place to try out different introductions. That's a great tip, Flora. Why don't you try to see if you can do a fun poem? And granted, Dr. Lippert has an easy topic for a poem. The guy's a veterinarian, and you can really have fun with animals. But Flora, you're creative. Because you write, and many of you are authors and speakers. You're very creative. You can do this. Try it. And if it doesn't work, hey, that's OK. That's OK. Just try another idea. Piggyback onto celebrity news. Comment on sub celebrities' bad behavior if you have expertise, if you have the right to do it. For example, Deborah Holtzman is a child safety expert. She <laughs> wrote a press release called Britney Spears Needs Safety Training when these pictures of Britney Spears hunched over in her car started to circulate all over the internet. Um, <laughs> she wrote a press release on it. She wrote a press release um, when Brad Pitt was seen out riding with I think a couple of his kids on his back or in his knapsack on his bicycle. I don't think he had a helmet on. The kids didn't, didn't have a helmet on. Deborah went berserk, and she's thinking, what would happen to those kids if that bike crashed? So she wrote a press release on it. She also wrote a press release um, on the top 10 tips to drive like a star, but not like Mel Gibson. She has gotten national publicity in major newspapers and magazines all over the US because she's commenting on celebrities' behavior. Celebrity news is hot. And you might think that this is beneath you, any publicity hound in his or her right mind doesn't think this is beneath them. If you can piggyback off celebrities' bad, but hey, you got a lot of stuff to work with. Just keep your eyes on the net. Go read the National Enquirer every day. There's something there every week that you can comment on. That's also a great publication for headlines, by the way. Okay, 
My last one, Special Report 51, 66 free things you can offer to generate publicity or capture email addresses. This special report gives you a long, long list of all kinds of things that you can pitch to the media if you've got something that's clever enough or, oh, you're still seeing my poll. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, is my poll gone now, Kathleen or Terry? Is it gone? Okay, good. Sorry. Technology. Okay, you can now see my screen. Sorry about that. Um, 66, here's 66, some of the 66 free things you can offer to generate publicity or to capture people's email addresses at your website. I'm going to go through these quickly. A comparison chart, a conversion tool, definitions from your industry, a buzzword chart. I love that one. A flow chart. This is for you if you have a technical, complicated topic, an installation guide on how to install something, a map. A pocket guide, a toolkit, cheat sheets. I offer two cheat sheets, 89 Reasons to Write a Press Release and the Top 10 Tools for Free Publicity. And you can sign up at my website at publicityhound.com. There's a box in the upper left-hand corner and, and you'll get these cheat sheets and they've been really popular. I've been offering them for a long, long time and I get a lot of people on my email list as a result. Those are my tips. And my question to you is, did I deliver on my promise? Did I deliver on the promise that I'd give you at least 52 doggone great ideas that you can start using today? And did you hear me bark at you? If you can't do most of them or all of them, I delivered on my promise. Absolutely. Thank you, Pamela. Jan says you sure did. Kelly says yes. Kaya says you bet. Kathleen says yes. Lucy says yes. Margaret says yes, can do most of them. Clarice says yes, you did. Terry, you sure did. Anna Roop, I learned a lot. Devon. Yes, it was over 52. Kathleen says, yes, you are authentic, enthusiastic, and funny. Have taken notes and highlighted all the URLs you shared. Kaya, thank you. She says, <laughs> give that girl a treat. Speaking of treats, have I got a treat for you? This is my offer. Those 52 tips, and they probably came out to maybe about 65 by the time you count up all the tips, they are a minuscule percentage of all of the tips in this giant bundle of special reports. There are 52 special reports in here, and altogether there are thousands of tips, thousands. I've got case studies in here. I've got just all kinds of examples on quizzes and fillers and things that people are offering to collect email addresses, speaker tips, author tips. I sell all 52 special reports at my site for $15 a piece. I bundled this whole thing and it regularly sells for 247. So if you buy it at 247 bucks, you're saving $533. But I want to do better than that. I want you to get this in your hot little paws. So here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to give you this entire bundle of thousands of tips that are very much like the ones I just shared with you. Not for 247. You can have all of them for 97 bucks, a savings of $436. But the only way that you can get it for 97, because nobody else knows about this, this is not at my website, 
you have to use the coupon code special reports when you go to check out. So here's the link, publicityhound.com forward slash shop forward slash special hyphen report. You can go there right now and order and you will get them as soon as you order. This is the best deal I have ever offered on these reports and it, it is the best deal that I will ever offer on these reports because I originally started out, oh gosh, I don't know how much I sold these for. I started, this, this bundle grew over time so the price grew over time and I, I will tell you that this bundle was just updated this week. And we went through and checked all the links in here. And there are hundreds and hundreds of links. And I put, put a lot of new stuff in here. And it is a hell of a deal. So um, is anybody's tail wagging? Do I see any tails wagging? Jackie says, I'm over ordering right now. Clarice says, very excited. Margaret says, yes. Anamroop says, yes, their tails are wagging. And again, you may, you're not going to need every one of these because I don't want you to attempt to do all of this. You can't possibly do all of it. I want you to pick and choose from the reports that you think are going to work best for you because you're all different. You're all very different. So go on over, and while you are ordering, I'm going to go through your questions. I'm also going to give you time to type some more questions into the box, and I'm going to go over to the water bowl and take a drink. So give me about 10 seconds. I wish that I had called my blog around the water bowl. <laughs> I think that would have been a great name for a blog. I'm going to start a podcast pretty soon. Maybe that's what I'll call it, around the water bowl. Okay, let's see if there were some questions that I did not answer here. Flora says, or oh, Lucy says, she wants to hear Dr. Al Lippert's talk. Yeah, he's very good. He's the veterinarian. Okay, if you've got questions, I'm going to hang around for as long as you've got questions. And it doesn't have to be on anything that you saw today. I hope you're all busy ordering because I would not want these special reports to get into the hands of your competitors. Okay. Again, Dan's site is pressreleasesender.com. And Mary is giving a link for another it's a headline generator of some sort, and I'm trying to cut and paste it. I don't think I can. Um, oh, wait a second. Maybe I can. Yeah, I can. Okay, I'm going to cut and paste it, and I'm going to type it into the window, and I'm going to send it to all of you. And you should see it in the Q&A box. That's another link for a headline generator. There are several of them, by the way. <clears throat> and one of my reports, I can't remember which one it was, has a link where you can find lots of these headline generators. They work in different ways and they tell you different types of things. There's one that's an emotional headline analyzer. Yeah, Stephanie says, I like the idea of pitching the AP Wire because they'll send their story to all media outlets that subscribe to them. 
Yep. Okay, Kathleen says, also happy to hear we could potentially order one report at a time. I don't want my head to explode with all this great info and waste it as I am prone to do. Um, for I am going to caution you about something. If you start ordering these one at a time and you fall in love with them, you don't want to have to be ordering report after report after report after report after report after report at 15 bucks a piece. You're going to want to order the whole kit and caboodle. Okay. Uh, Anna Roop says, hi, Joan. I just ordered. Thank you, Anna Roop. I was wondering if you can give any tips on getting interviews about radio and TV. Who would be interested on the subject of relationships, especially coming from a Christian angle? I am a new author. Anna Roop, the Christian um, community is huge. If I were you, I would research Christian media outlets only. That's where I would start. I wouldn't try any secular media at all. I would focus only on Christian media, and that would include Christian radio shows. And let me tell you the easiest way to do it. They have all these expensive databases you can buy. You don't have to spend $1,000 on a media database. You can go on Google and just type in top 50 Christian radio stations or best Christian radio stations, best Christian TV programs, Christian, um, Christian writers, freela Christian freelancers, Christian editors, and you should be able to find all you need, and Anna Roop, I'm going to give you a best breed tip right at the end, right before we sign off. So those of you who are thinking of heading out of here, don't head out because I got three killer tips yet to share with you at the very end. And um, Anna Roop, there are also a lot of Christian groups on Facebook. And I'll bet you that there are also Christian book, book groups on LinkedIn. I'd be surprised if there weren't. I think you'd have more luck on Facebook. So go over there and do a search for the Christian groups and concentrate just on them. They would be most interested. And I think you'd have a tough time getting into secular media outlets. Lucy says, just ordered. Thank you. And thinking like a hound, I will be speaking at the UW Writers Institute. I think that means, yeah, University of Wisconsin Writers Institute in Madison this weekend. I asked the director if she'd include my bookmarks with my book info into the bag, the swag bag, for the 400 participants. And she said yes without hesitation. And she thanked me. There you go. Another way to get in front, to let these people take a little bit of you home with them. Very nice. And congratulations, Lucy, for thinking about a bookmark. You know what, those, you know what bookmarks do? They get, um, they get put on refrigerators with magnets. I have bookmarks on my refrigerator with magnets. Uh, Lois says, I am a shame, guilt educator, a new field. Oh, Lois, <laughs> you have so many possibilities. Um, who is your target audience, Lois? Give me an idea of who you want to get in front of. Who do you educate? What kinds of people? Women. What kinds of women? Be more specific. College women, high school women, millennial women, baby boomer women, women in nursing homes. Okay, Lois says mainly 30 to 50. It's really important that you are able to identify your target market as narrowly as you possibly can. If you're trying to get in front of all women, 
Okay, Anna Roop, I'll help you out afterward. Anna Roop is having a problem with um, with the order. I'll 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 fix you. <laughs> I'll take care of you after we hang up. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, It's important that you are able to really narrowly define your target market. If you want to market to all women, you have a tough job. You got to market to all women. Do you know how hard that is? So try to narrow your market. You can narrow your market by age. You can narrow it by region of the country. You can narrow your target market by issues that they're passionate about. You can narrow the target market by education. Are they well educated? Or are some of these people who you're trying to reach, if you're trying to reach women between 30 to 50 and your topic is guilt and shame, I'll bet that there are a lot of unemployed women who might want to hear from you, Lois. That's just a guess. Lois says right now she's been seeing abused women. Yeah, yeah, them too. Especially moms. Yes, especially moms. Also, here's another tip for identifying your target market. What issues are they passionate about? Are they passionate about holding on to their guns? Are they passionate about helping the environment and not leaving that footprint, that carbon footprint? Lois says people want to be free of guilt. Yeah, they do. Um, talk about, but really if you can narrow that target market down, that'll really help you hone in because it's much easier to find women 30 to 50. They're in certain types of groups on Facebook. And those also include millennials too. Lois says she has a way. Good. Excellent. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Um, you have until midnight to order. Flora says, parents grieving the death of kids have guilt. I know from recent experience. Oh, Flora, did you lose a child? Or maybe perhaps have a friend? Oh, Flora. I'm so sad to hear that. She recently lost her son. My condolences, our condolences to you, Flora. Yeah, you know what Lois is talking about. Okay, other questions? Okay, if not, um, I am going to share. If you still have questions, type them into the questions box. Anything related to promotion and publicity, I am going to share my super duper best of breed tips with those of you who are still in the room and most of you, I'm happy to say, are still here. Tip number one, Google the name of anyone who you want to pitch and do your homework before you pitch. Google their name. Look everywhere for any nuggets of information that you can find out about them. One of the most valuable pieces of information that you can get about them, and this is not that hard to find, and I'll tell you how to do it in a second, is to try to find the name of their pet. The name of their pet. If you Google the name Joan Stewart, the publicity hound, you would find the name of my pet fairly easily. Let me show you a really easy way to do it. 
you go on to Google. Now, you're Googling, you're trying to find the name of a pet. You don't even know if this person has a pet. So let's use Margaret Reese, for example. Margaret, I'm going to use you as an example. Um, you would go and just Google Marguerite or Margaret, however you want to spell it. No, I'm not showing a different screen, Kelly. You're going to just have to listen to this. You're going to want to go on to Google, because I want to keep this link up there, because some of you still may want to buy. So this is what you're seeing. You're seeing the bye-bye, the buy link. You go on to Google, and you Google Margaret Reese and a plus sign, my dog, or Margaret Reese plus my pet. And if Margaret blogged about her dog or her cat or her pet, you will probably find it. I was looking for the name of a blogger's pet, and I found it within about 15 seconds using that little trick. Now, once you know the name of the pet, what are you, how are you going to use that? I'm going to throw this back at you and see, I'm going to have you put your thinking caps on and think about this a second. You're going to pitch somebody, let's say it's a blogger, you know she has a dog, you know the name of her dog, how could you use that in a pitch? What would you do? How would you use it? That's a hard question because you're not used to doing this. So if you can't think of an answer, don't worry about it. I'm going to give you a couple of ideas in a second. Any guesses? We have one guess so far. Okay. Flora says she would mention something the blogger shared in a post about her pet. Exactly. Exactly. And you could do that at the beginning of the pitch if the pet directly ties into your pitch. For example, if I am Dr. Al Lippert, the veterinarian, I would mention the blogger's dog right in the first sentence to get her attention. Another way, and tie it into the pitch, another way, again, the pitch might sound like something like, let's say that he is promoting some kind of special dog vitamins that he sells. His pitch might sound like this. <clears throat> um, Here's a tip Sparky, Sparky's the name of her dog, here's a tip Sparky might love. You will too. There's a new dog treat on the market that's made of all natural ingredients. It's also gluten-free. Gluten has, and then I'm going to give a statistic, gluten has been found to create allergies in 3 out of 10 dogs. Would you like me to send you a sample for Sparky? Okay, She's going to be really impressed that you know Sparky's name. She's going to be really impressed. Now, if the pitch doesn't tie in, you could mention the dog's name in the PS. PS, how's Sparky? Or PS, P, you have to be careful about this because you don't, you have to watch to see how old the blog post is because the dog you know, may have run away or the dog might not be around anymore. So you could say something like, P.S. I loved your blog post on how Sparky got into your sock drawer and, ru <laughs> and ruined three pairs of your best wool ankle socks or something like that. And she'll probably be amused, she should be thrilled that you read the blog post. So that's how you could do it. So that's tip number one. And it doesn't have to be the name of their pet, but that's something that gets everybody's attention. It could be a favorite food that they like. It could be a place they went on vacation, a personal little tidbit. It could be about a problem or something they're struggling with. That they're, a lot of bloggers write about this personal stuff. Okay, tip number two. I want to thank Joel Friedlander for sending me this tip. 
he said that there is a wonderful tool that will help you find the email address of it's I believe it's not just journalists it's of anybody who works at a company or a nonprofit you go to email hunter h u n t e r dot com email hunter dot com and it will ask you for the dom the URL of the or what's the domain name so I used to work at a paper called the News Herald in just outside of Cleveland Ohio and I went over there and typed in um, news-herald.com and it brought up the names of all these people who work at the News Herald and then a little number next to their name. You can click on the number and you can see all the places where that person is online where their email address is listed. How cool is that? No more having to use fancy media directories to find the email address of journalists you're looking for. You can go over to emailhunter.com. I found, oh gosh, more than eight of them. And I didn't have time to keep looking, but I was fascinated by this. And I'm finding more and more of these tools every day. And the technology is just helping all of us really do what we want to do. So that's best of breed tip number two. This is best of breed tip number three. Steal. Steal ideas that you like, that you can adapt. Now, I don't mean steal the name of somebody's newsletter. If I saw the name of somebody's newsletter was Around the Water Bowl, I wouldn't call my newsletter Around the Water Bowl because I'd think it's a clever name for a newsletter. I wouldn't do that. I'd come up with something else. But let's say I see a clever subject line come through in somebody's email. And I subscribe to a lot, I'm on a lot of email lists for these big internet marketers because their subject lines are great. And I study their subject lines. And when I see one that makes me drop what I'm doing and click on it and open it, I pay attention to what it is and I keep a swipe file here in my office and I put it in my file. And I want you to do the same thing because you can steal a lot of these ideas. Let's say that you love the way that somebody opens, puts like the opening for their email. Let's say that they just put one word in the first paragraph and the sentence is, the, the word is tired, period. New paragraph, I am so tired of constantly hunting for dot, 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 and you love that opening. You can use the same opening for whatever it is you're mailing because chances are that the people on their list are not going to be on your list. If they are, they're probably only going to be a couple of them, and you can just use that little technique. You don't even have to use the word tired. The, the word can be angry or the word can be frustrated, period, new paragraph. Were you ever so frustrated trying to hunt for journalists' email addresses that you couldn't believe you'd have to spend $2,000 on an expensive media directory? I just found a great tool that dot, 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 so you could use the same technique they used. Look for the way they write. You're all writers. I'm a writer. I'm a writing coach. And I'm always looking at clever openings. Look at their interesting PSs that are on the end of emails. The Most of the big internet marketers will put a PS on the end. So steal I little ideas like that. You can steal ideas for press releases. You can steal ideas for contests for polls that you see, all kinds of fun stuff. Now, I'm not encouraging you to violate copyright, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not encouraging you to cut and paste paragraphs of their content. That's not what I'm telling you to do. I'm telling you to, to take a great idea and then figure out how you can just tweak it for your own use. 
Stephanie says, um, in terms of the blogger with the dog, I would start by saying I'm a dog lover as well. What kind of a breed is it? My dog is a, that's a, Stephanie, that's a great one, and I'll tell you why I love that response. You are asking her a question about something that I'm assuming is very dear to her heart, and it's going to prompt her to answer you back, and you're going to start that engagement. So you're going to have to figure out a way to get back, back to the pitch, but I, I think that you can do it, but you've already got her attention because you have something in common, your love of dogs. Okay, Kaya answers a question I'm not sure I know the answer to. I'm confused about advanced review copies. Can I send digital copies directly to people without going through KDP if I plan to publish the ebook via KDP? Kaya, I think the answer is yes, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I'm, oh boy, I would think the answer is yes, because you want to get as many advanced review copies out there as you possibly can, because you want to get a lot of reviews before you launch. So here's what I'm going to do, Kaya. I am going to um, send that question to a couple of my publishing guru friends, and I will email you and let you know what the answer is. Um, Flora asks, do you have to ask the reviewer what format they want to receive the review in? Absolutely. They might want a paperback because some reviewers are very picky about books and they might want to see what, what it feels like. They might want to see what kind of paper it's printed on. It's printed on cheap paper. Is the photo on the cover? Is the resolution bad? If so, that's probably going to be part of the review. And other people don't care about that. All some of the reviewers care about is the writing. So most definitely ask reviewers what format they want it in. And you definitely want their permission to send them an advanced review copy. Yes. You ask them if they would like to receive it. And the way you do that, Flora, is you do that with a simple email pitch. Real simple. Okay, any last minute questions? If not, we're going to call it quits here. Clarice says, thank you, Joan. You've been very informative. You're welcome, Clarice. I hope your tails are wagging as you're leaving the doghouse. And I hope to catch up with you, all of you, real soon. And for those of you who have purchased, and quite a few of you have purchased, I hope that you will let me know about the ideas that you have used that have worked. And here's why. This is my final tip. It's an offer. I want to give you free publicity. I want to give you free publicity in my newsletter and in my blog. One quick question, Anna Roop. Can I do a radio interview over the phone with radio stations, or do I need special equipment? Anna Roop, you can do a lot of telephone interviews. A lot of phone interviews. Um, some people who are doing podcasts will want you to have a headset microphone. So if you want to do radio shows and podcasts and online radio, I would go to your nearest retailer, go on to Amazon. You can buy a simple headset microphone. I have a I use a Logitech and it costs about 40, 45, 40 bucks. And I get the best buy. Um, they get a little, for 10 bucks, you can get a warranty on it because I have ruined so many of these. I have stepped on them. I have ripped the microphone off. The, the, I forget to pull it out of the little port here, and the, the wire pulls out of the headset. So if you're going to Best Buy, get the $10 guarantee with it because I've used that guarantee. So yeah, you can do phone interviews. I want to give you publicity, so share with me your publicity success stories. You might be in my next special report. So 
thanks everybody for attending. It's been a great session. We'll catch up with you later. Now go out and get some fabulous publicity. Bye-bye.